and welcome to my unpaid and unsponsored review of the Idiot's Guide to a Time Grapher. Before we go any further, let's do a watch check. Today I'm wearing my Borealis Cascais, which is a technically a wonderful watch, 41mm. It's a Portuguese brand. In actual fact, I did a review on this some time ago. I only watched it the other day and it was bloody awful, so I'm going to delete that and do it again. Keep your eye open, guys. Now, a few years ago, I bought this time graph for not really knowing what I was in for. On the positive side, it's taught me a little bit about watch movements. On the negative side, it's made me a little anal about their timekeeping. So what does a time graph actually do? Well, it gives you the rate, which is the accuracy, the amplitude, which I'll come to in a minute, the beta, which I'll also come to in a minute, and the parameters, which is merely the settings. So what's an amplitude? Very professional diagram here, you see, balance wheel. A high amplitude is when the balance wheel swings like this. A low amplitude is when it swings like this. So high amplitude, low amplitude. A beta is how evenly it swings. So if it swings the same here to here, like this, that could give you a beta of 0.5 down to 0. Uh, down to zero. Now that's a healthy amplitude, 0 0.5 down to zero. Zero being the same either side. It's slightly higher one side than the other, it creates a beta error. Going back to the amplitude, a good amplitude is anything between 275 and 325. That's how it's generally considered. But different calibers um, tend to have different characteristics. A couple of things to note. Um, no watch is uh, fully accurate or as accurate as it can be until it's fully round. Um, although better movements uh, will run more accurately when not fully round than cheaper movements or not as movements that aren't as good. Secondly, when you first put your watch on the time graph, I take absolutely no notice of the reading because it needs to settle down. Now this has been on the time graph now for a minute or so. We can see that it's running at approximately uh, plus three seconds. That will drop because I know this uh, actually runs dial up round about zero. The amplitude is 293. This isn't fully round at the moment, by the way, but it's probably 90%. The beta are 0.1, so this is running very healthily. That is the uh, beats per hour, 28,800. The other figure you saw is the lift angle, but I'll come to that in a minute, and it's not something you really need to uh, worry about. These lines down here, now the closer the two lines are together, reflect the beat error. So this is 0.1, which is very low, and you'll see the lines, the lines very close together. If it's running fast, the line will raise. If it's running slowly, it will decline. As you can see now, it's settled down to zero seconds per day. This, in actual fact, is a high grain movement um, and it's uh, regulated by the, man the watch manufacturer to plus four, minus four seconds a day. Now, positional variance. Positional variance is when um, the watch is held at a different angle. Now, I've just moved that down, as you can see, so the so it's vertical. I'm going to give it a second to uh, settle down and come back to you. Now a little while later, you'll see that in actual fact, it's running slightly faster, but not much, and it's kept its beta at 0 0.1, just risen to 0 0.2. But that, that's pretty good. Now I've put my Zelos Swordfish on here. Um, as you can see, that appears to be running very accurately. Um, in actual fact, when I first bought this watch, it wasn't, and I uh, regulated it. However, it's not as accurate as you think, because I know from experience, if you put an NH35 uh, watch facing dial upwards, it should really run at about 7 or 8 seconds fast, and that gives you true accuracy during the day, so this will probably run a little bit slow, but that is rising a little bit. You'd have also noticed that the ticking sound slowed down. That's because uh, this has got a... 21,600 beats per hour movement um, against the Solidus 28,800. Now let's see what happens when I change the positional variance. There we go, I've given that a minute to settle down and you can see the beta has jumped right up to 0 0.4 from 0 0.1 and it's gone to uh, minus 6. Uh, like I said earlier, the um, 
the lesser movement, shall we say, don't have uh, positional variance as good as uh, a better movement. There we are, I've turned it dial up again, let it settle down, and you can see it's ticking away rather nicely. Now let's talk about how we change the settings on one of these things. First of all, I'm going to press this button, and that will mute the noise, so we can, uh, that was getting on my nerves anyway. If we press the red button, the light comes on, and we press the white button once more, and we get the menu. Now, the beat rate is pr presently on automatic. You can do it manually. Frankly, you never need to. We press the menu once more, and we get lift angle. Now, each watch has a different lift angle, or each movement has a lift, different lift angle, I should say. Um, on the NH35, if I remember rightly, it's got a lift angle of 53, so you can adjust that to 53. Now, all you'll change if you, if you change the lift angle is to give yourself a more accurate amplitude reading. Frankly, I don't bother. Press it once more, and it's the test period. We can change it. Sorry, we can uh, do that again. There we are test period we can change that up or down the greater the test period the more accurate you're going to get the reading um, the default in on this is actually 12 seconds if you press the start button once more it takes you back to the beginning so how much does one of these toys cost you um, 18 months, two years ago, I picked this up. I managed to get one for £85. Um, that was exceptionally good value. Uh, expect to pay between uh, £120 and £150. Uh, this is a base model, but it'd be good enough for us enthusiasts. Uh, professional watch repairers use uh, far more complicated things than this. In actual fact, you can put an app on your phone, and, uh, which is what I did before I owned one of these, but it's not really not as good. I would also suggest that you learn how to regulate a watch. Otherwise, buying one of these is a little bit like buying a car but not having a driving license. Um, when you learn to regulate your watch, make sure you do it on an inexpensive movement, won't you? And there's, there's lots of videos on YouTube to teach you how to do that. Finally, make up your mind what you consider is reasonable accuracy. As far as I'm concerned, anything plus 10 minus fine, 5 is fine. That means during a period, you know, you only have to wear the watch for a week or so and uh, it will need adjusting maybe for a minute. You know, that's fine. We don't need anything more accurate than that. Um, you may want to be a little bit more fussy. In actual fact, you may say, oh, you know, 20, 30 seconds a day is fine. Uh, that's going to be down to you, but try and stick to it would be my suggestion. So that brings me to the end of review. I hope you found this interesting. If you have, please consider subscribing. And if you've enjoyed it, click the like button. Enjoy the rest of your day.